I know I ask you guys to bear with me a lot, and honestly, I mean it every single time, but especially this time because, as you can tell, this is going to be a long episode. I rewatched the entire Saw franchise, and I'm not gonna not talk about it. There are timestamps in the description below if you'd like to skip around the video, but if you just want to sit for the entire thing, then get comfortable. Hi friends, welcome back, or just welcome if you're new here. I am here as a friend to give you my spoiler-free thoughts on the latest movie that I've watched in theaters or maybe something that I've watched while cozied up at home. If you're looking for my thoughts on a specific movie, DM me on Instagram, let me know in the comment section on YouTube, or let me know on the podcast. Tune in for new episodes every Friday, and don't forget to follow the podcast, subscribe on YouTube, all the things so you don't miss out on what I'm watching and what we're going to be talking about next. We're gonna get into it, you guys. Let's press play on the recorder and dive right in. I'm gonna talk about watch order, my favorite traps, the moments that made me wince. Of course, before we can get into all of that, we're gonna talk about my thoughts on Saw 10. Hoping for a miraculous cure, John Kramer travels to Mexico for a risky and experimental medical procedure only to discover the entire operation is a scam to defraud the most vulnerable. Armed with a newfound purpose, the infamous serial killer uses deranged and ingenious traps to turn the tables on the con artists. Let's talk about the music! If you are a fan of the franchise, then the music will be all too familiar and it'll make you feel at home. The score throughout really informs the story and ramps up that feeling of dread and suspense. That iconic track is very much present, we love her, and she unsurprisingly sounds incredible in the theater surround sound. Let's talk about the story. I really like it. There is a flip side to this, and I'll talk about that a little later in the video, but for now, I just want to focus on what I liked about the story. I will say that I hadn't seen a trailer for the movie until I think about a week before the movie released, and I honestly wish I hadn't watched the trailer because the trailer really gave the entire story away. Kramer travels to Mexico for a medical procedure that'll make him cancer free, but he finds out that it's a scam. Then we get into familiar territory where it starts to feel more like a Saw movie. I really love to see more of Tobin Bell as John Kramer, and I'm gonna kinda get into his acting because it's part of what I like about the story, so bear with me. I have seen some comments on Tobin Bell's acting, and not only is this franchise not hailed for spectacular acting, but he actually does a good job. I really liked seeing him flesh out the character of John, his hopes, what he's lost, and what kind of person he is. Side note, I was gonna put a spoiler warning somewhere in here, but the trailers gave us a bit much in the way of characters, so technically I'm not spoiling anything unless you haven't seen any of the previous films. In addition to getting more of Tobin Bell as John, we're getting more of that relationship between John and Amanda, and I love it. The franchise overall never really took a lot of time developing this relationship, least of all in one movie. There's a lot of glimpses and flashbacks, but to get their relationship for an extended period of time was something I really enjoyed. Speaking of Amanda, we've got to talk about Shawnee Smith, and I will go on record saying I've never liked Amanda. So Miss Shawnee is knocking it out of the park as far as I'm concerned. I really love the chemistry she has with Tobin, and again, I love the fact that their relationship, that apprentice-master relationship, gets explored so much more in this movie. Shawnee has always really brought Amanda's flaws and cracks to the surface so well, and she does it again in this movie in a way that makes you wonder about her future, that you may or may not have already seen if you've watched the previous films. I know I usually talk about the acting last in this section, but I really want to review the traps in this movie. Without spoiling anything, of course, the traps in this movie are so much fun. I really love the intricacies of these traps, but I really like to see the traps as a whole. I like to see the situation the character is in, and of course my mind is racing because 10 out of 10 times it is bad news bears. Then. When the trap is explained, that feeling of dread really starts to sink in. The traps in this movie really stand out, but I do wish the movie spent more time on the traps to make the film overall feel even more in line with previous films in the franchise. Now, what did I think about the movie? Is it worth watching? Let's just put it all out there. 
I saw a TikTok from Kit Laser and he mentioned Saw in a list of horror movies, quote, where the brutality is so over the top that you can abstract it and have a sort of grisly fun, end quote. So when I talk about how much I like this stuff and how fun and entertaining it is, it really is because it's so much, so wild, it is so over the top. That said, I really like this movie. It's probably one of my favorites in the franchise. I think you either like this one or you don't. If you've been hanging out with me for the past few weeks, then you know I've been re-watching all of the Saw movies in preparation for the 10th installment. Did I need to? Absolutely not. Did I have a blast watching all these movies? Absolutely. If you're a fan of the franchise and you're all caught up, then you absolutely have to see this one if you haven't seen it already. I really like the story, that iconic Saw twist, and I like the traps in this movie too. I will say, however, that the runtime on this movie is almost two hours, and a lot of that was, according to an article I linked in the description below, was so they really had time to give us more John and show us what kind of guy he is, and to be honest, we've been knowing. Speaking of which, that flip side to what I was saying earlier about liking the story. I like that they gave us more of John's character, but I did see people not liking that they essentially made him a likable character. I think this point is really interesting because the type of person he is has always been very clear throughout the franchise, but maybe this story is more heavy handed in the way it presents that. So I thought this was an interesting argument. There is something to be said about John's morality and how he kills, sorry, how he doesn't kill anyone, justified or not, but that's not something we're here to tackle. But there's a reason why he's a beloved icon and one of my favorite characters in the franchise. Speaking of not liking things, an honest reason I would suggest skipping this movie is if you don't like intense violence or if intense violence really bothers you, it's really not for everyone. If you've never gotten into the franchise because of how graphic it is, this movie doesn't let up. So if this is something you don't like, if it makes you squeamish or upset, then absolutely skip this movie. Additionally, if you don't like flashbacks, and this is more of a comment for the franchise as a whole, if you're looking to get into it, it is a lot and it's all over the place. The timeline is not linear, but it's definitely something that if you're paying attention to, it's very easy to follow, but again, it is a lot. Before I get into my thoughts on the franchise and favorite traps, I wanna talk about watch order. Saw 10 takes place after the first Saw movie, but I would recommend watching the movies in order from Saw to Saw 7, also known as Saw 3D. Then I would watch Jigsaw and finally Saw 10. I put 10 at the end mostly because elements in 10 will ruin twists in other films. So for that reason, I would watch it last. Spiral isn't the best and Chris Rock is squinting his way through the entire movie. But if you're looking for a little more from the franchise, that movie is, it's okay, it's fun. You'll get twists and gore, but don't expect too much. Before I get into the spoilers, I do wanna put a trigger warning for Saw 10 and for the franchise in case you plan on watching all of the movies. As we've talked about already, the franchise is intense when it comes to gore, but there's more in some of these movies that I wasn't expecting. So here's what I picked out from the franchise. As always, do your own research and make sure you're in a good headspace. Graphic violence, this includes dismemberment, mutilation, self-harm, explosions, acid, the list goes on. Needles, knives, and blades, blood, lots of blood, SA, infanticide, and drugs. Saw 10 does include a lot of the previously mentioned triggers, so I'm gonna repeat a few. Drugs, graphic violence, including self-harm, drowning, dismemberment, burns, body horror, actually, blood, lots of blood, guts, eyes, and brains. Again, if you're interested in the franchise, but any of this bothers you, I would just skip it. Don't even watch it. The SA, which is something I really hate in media, is in Saw 4 during the scene with the bedroom trap. The assault is shown on a TV. There's a static video and some audio. As far as I'm concerned, any amount of SA is graphic, 
but it's not as explicit as the gore in the franchise and something you can easily skip if you need to. As always, make sure you're in a good headspace if you're gonna watch any of these movies. I'm not gonna lie, I was always gonna add a section talking about the franchise because you guys, I sat through all these movies and I'm gonna talk about them. We're not gonna go super in depth, but we are gonna talk about the previous films and my favorites, so please check the timestamps in the description below if you wanna skip the spoilers and go straight to the outro to check out what I'm gonna be watching next. Overall thoughts, I really love this franchise. Rewatching all these movies, I realized I'd actually never seen, I think, three of the Saw films. But having rewatched them so recently, I love this franchise. It is actually really good. Old Man John trying to rehabilitate people in the worst way possible that actually works sometimes. I love me a good twist. If you listen to the podcast exclusive on Spotify about Cobweb, then you'll remember when I said that I love a good twist and I believe that a movie can be saved by a really good twist. The way Saw hits the twists every single time, some are weaker than others, but it still hits every single time. And the music, I love, 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 love it. I also love to hate Amanda and Hoffman, my two least favorite people in the world. I love Amanda's relationship with John and it's why I hate her a little less than Hoffman. She's a really interesting character and each movie she's in, she really adds more layers to the character and the 10th installment really emphasizes her struggles as well as how far she did or didn't grow as a character in later films. Hoffman, one of those characters, I can't stand him, but I really like him. I took notes while I watched the movies and I spent most of my time in the notes calling him a nerd and complaining about his lips. Before I start ranting mid rant, I wanna talk about the story overall because I really like it. I love the deeper conversation about right and wrong, justice, injustice, and more surface level. I just like the traps and how unique and interesting they are. I will say though that I just wish some things were tied up better and some characters were used or shown more, whether in flashbacks or in the present story. Moving on to my favorite movies in the franchise in no particular order, and I know I just said no particular order, but Saw is number one. She is an icon. Then we've got Saw 3. I really love the twist in this movie. I love the relationship between John and Amanda as always. And this movie, in my opinion, is made better with flashbacks from other films. Don't come after me, you guys, but I actually kind of like Jigsaw, but let's be honest, I just really like the cycle trap and I love a good timeline shift. Finally, we've got Saw 10. It's got some humor, it's got interesting and different traps, practical effects that this franchise is so good at, and we love a really good mid credit scene. Honestly, I like all of the Saw films. I like the entire franchise, but in my opinion, these are my favorites. These are what I feel are the strongest movies out of the bunch. So when I was re-watching all of the Saw movies, my honey happened to be in the room while I was watching a lot of them. And I told him, I don't remember movies, I remember traps. Honestly, I wasn't really sure I had seen a movie until I saw a trap that I recognized. So of course, we're gonna talk about my favorites. There are so many memorable traps, but these are the ones that stood out to me for one reason or another and I will be excluding traps from Saw 10 to avoid spoilers. Like I was saying earlier, the cycle trap. The look is really interesting and the practical effects, amazing. What else? Ooh, the rack, yo, the way it was, and it just, that one was really intense. Speaking of intense, the horsepower trap was so interesting and a little more complex than most traps having so many people involved. It also features the late Chester Bennington as Evan, so it definitely stands out even more. The puppet trap in Spiral, I know, I know I was talking a little bit bad about Spiral. That movie does have some really good moments. The puppet trap is one of them. It's really intricate and it's interesting while also being a jaw-dropping moment in the story. Speaking of Jaws, the one who stands above the rest, unsurprisingly, the reverse bear trap she is an icon, she is the moment, she is everything. Also right up there with her is the shotgun collar which holds her own because of the story she's got behind her, twists on twists. 
and just how graphic she is. I feel like we've been chit-chatting for a while and I'm sorry, kinda not really sorry. I really have nobody to talk to about this kind of stuff. So if you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much. We're gonna wrap this up with traps or moments that made me wince. If you've been here for a while, then you know I am a fan of the violence and all the blood and guts and gore. But sometimes, once in a blue moon, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I want to look away, cringe, I wanna cover my face. I don't wanna look at the TV, I'm shouting no at the TV. Yeah, I get into it, you guys. And these movies got me a couple of times. Some of those moments include the needle pit from Saw 2. You guys, the way he picked her up and just dropped her into that pit was wild. The way she was aggressively sifting through the syringes was just too much. It was too much. Saw 3 brings us another moment. This one is Eric Matthews when he's fighting Amanda with a broken ankle, foot, whatever. The whole situation was a mess. And when he stepped on it or when she hit it, oh my gosh, the crunching, the visuals, unnecessary. I did not like it. Honorable mention is the horsepower trap that featured Evan super glued to the driver's seat of a car. It was graphic. It wasn't too bad until they did the close-ups. Mmm. Have you seen Saw 10 yet? If you saw the movie, what did you think about it? I really like the movie, but I'm also a fan of the franchise. I really like the simplicity of the story the plot twists, and the traps. Saw 10 feels like a Saw movie most of the time, but it really does spend a lot of time on the characters, which again is something I really love in storytelling. The Saw franchise doesn't really dig into the characters much, so it was really refreshing to see, and again, I really enjoyed it. Additionally, the actors are obviously older. This was something that I completely forgot to talk about earlier, but I did see complaints about that too. I don't mind it at all because the alternative is one, don't make the movie, two, recast the actors, or three, de-age them. And we've already briefly talked about that before in the Dial of Destiny episode with the icon Harrison Ford. I don't mind that they didn't de-age in this movie. And honestly, it didn't take me out of the movie at all, but it's definitely something to keep in mind if that sort of thing might bother you. All right, Saw fans, that brings us to the end of the video. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you very much. Check out the description below for a link to the podcast if you're watching here on YouTube. Leave the video a thumbs up if you like the video so I know you liked the video. Let me know your thoughts on the movie in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for catching today's episode. I know this was a long one, you guys. Thank you for bearing with me and hanging out. You can listen to new episodes every Friday and make sure you subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, all the things so you don't miss the next movie we're going to be talking about. The last weekend of September was packed. I watched The Creator, Saw 10, The Exorcist, then I watched The Exorcist Believer, so bear with me. The Creator was honestly everything I wanted and more. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know my initial reaction, but if you want to know more, then check out the episode on that movie that I also posted today. We got a little backed up, so the episode on The Exorcist Believer will drop next week on my birthday. That's fun, and honestly a lot more exciting than the movie actually was, but we'll talk about that next week. After that, I am finally dropping my thoughts on No One Will Save You. The plan is to drop both episodes on the same day, so keep an eye out for those two. Some things had to get shifted around because I've been starting work so much earlier for the past two weeks and honestly i am so tired i'm still trying to get used to the schedule while also making time for writing recording and editing i'm figuring it out though so everything will be posting eventually so i hope you'll join me here on youtube and the podcast especially for those exclusive episodes i would love to hear from you guys so please let me know your thoughts on today's episode or just your thoughts on the movie we talked about today in the comment section on YouTube or on Spotify. Let me know your favorite Saw movie, your favorite traps, your favorite characters. I wanna know what you guys think. So let me know wherever you are listening or on Instagram at a.rocket.review and I'll talk to you guys next week. But until the next episode, spread positivity, be safe, take care of yourself and remember, everybody deserves a chance. I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.